Hello everyone. The Horde and Alliance, while trying to kill one another, they ended up in Nashitar. Queen Ajara has us in her clutches, while death is waiting all around us. Now eventually, the factions did realize that it's better to turn the weapons away from one another and focus on the threat of Ajara herself. Together, we managed to break the barrier, gain entry into the Eternal Palace, while the Queen, she doesn't seem too worried about it. You can't stop us, Ajara. We are coming to end your reign. Stop you? My dear child, why would I want to stop you? Consider this a formal invitation. My palace has been made ready. Your presence is eagerly anticipated. So many wonders lie in store. Such magnificence. When the waters claimed her and the Highborn, they entered the deal with Nisoth. They've spent millennia here of brutal conquest to build themselves a brand new empire. The palace, both the exterior and the inside, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Here it is, where she holds dominion over the depths that once threatened to claim her. Side by side, Lorfmar, Felistra, Jaina and Chandris, they lead our forces to the days of eternity, where the first obstacle awaits, Abyssal Commander Sivara. One. For Queen Ashara! A master of both martial and magical arts, Abyssal Commander Sivara has ruthlessly led Ajara's vanguard to countless of victories. She also popped up during her questing in Najatar, where you found out that before her transformation, she was actually Felistra's most gifted student. The Arcanist recommended her to enroll into the Royal Academy, which pushed her right into the hands of Ajara. This fight is all about what debuffs she puts on you. Stand with those that get the same color. Mixing it up will cause your raid to take more damage, but at the same time, this also stacks and it deals more damage to you, so sometimes you'll want to mix it up just to drop the stack. A nice easy fight to ease our way into the palace. It is good you survived. I would hate for our gathering to end prematurely. Enough of these games, Azara! Face us! Patience, little one. We will be together soon enough. Ashvane means to hold us at bay, but I can sense fonts of magic close by that are feeding into this room. If we disrupt the flow of those channels, Ashvane's barrier will fall. In order to get to Ashvane and open a way further into the palace, we'll need to get the barrier down. In order to do that, we'll need to kill the other bosses. Luckily, we were planned to do that anyways, so our team decided to head over to the Font of Radiance, where the Queen herself is in the middle of a ritual. The ritual has begun. We all have our parts to play. Isn't that so, my child? Yes, my Queen. I sacrifice all that I am to serve you. Gaze upon true devotion, Landwalkers. Behold, the rage of a queen. Strike that monstrosity down, champions. We must stop the flow of energy from this chamber. Another Rav of Ajara creature has been summoned by sacrificing her loyal handmaiden, Salira. The people might have been loyal to Ajara in life, but these Naga take it a whole step further. This Rav is a bit bigger and a bit more powerful. Probably why they call it the Radiance of Ajara. One. No escape! Tornadoes sweep around the battlefield, ready to throw any unaware adventurer into the painful waters. Arcane bombs and squall traps, they're tossed around the field. A mighty storm is summoned by the big storm rave. With the rave deaths, the storm will disappear, and you can focus on the radiance once more. My life for Azara! Well done. Now to find the last font and destroy it. The sooner we do so, the better our chances of foiling Ajara's mad scheme. It's time for a swim, because this is an underwater raid after all, and what would it be without getting our feet wet? Drowning won't be a problem, as an oxygen-rich membrane is provided. Healing, however, that might be a little bit tricky, as not even our healing light can reach us in these darkest of depths. That's where the shimmer-skinned pufferfish come in. When they die, they splooge out a bioluminescent cloud, which makes you light up. It lets you be healed again, but it also makes you a target for the creatures of the deep. Staying above one of these open chasms for too long, it will turn any brave adventurer into a tasty snack real quick, so make sure not to linger over these chasms. 
and that's just the environment. Not even the Blackwater Behemoth itself. Summoned from depths unknown, the Blackwater Behemoth, it lurks in an abyss so dark that not even the Naga dare to venture into it. Only Ashara is capable of taming the beast, and she has trained it to faithfully guard her treasures. In this darkness, we must stay luminescent to be able to get healed, but the Behemoth, it sometimes switches caves to hang out in and tries to cast an instant death spell. Up to us to ride the slipstreams, not get eaten by what's down below, avoid the jellyfish, thankfully we don't have to jump on them, and bring the beastie down. Well done. Now to find the last font and destroy it. The sooner we do so, the better our chances of foiling Ajara's mad scheme. The barrier has fallen. Let us see how brave Ashvane is without a magical shield to protect her. We had a deal, Ajara. Give me the power you promised. Oh, I intend to. I merely wanted our guests to bear witness to your glorious ascension. No! Not like this! What, what are, are you, you doing, doing to me? You asked to be powerful, Priscilla. Consider our bargain complete. Priscilla Ashvane's relentless pursuit of power. It has ultimately led her to the Eternal Palace and into a dark pack with Queen Ashara. That's the extra information that we learned from the Dungeon Journal. And as you can see, this is not exactly what Ashvane had in mind. Sadly, still no explanation as to how she went from talking to Sylvanas into this bargain with Ajara. Now there were some changes when it comes to her storyline. I believe that in beta times, there was supposed to be a connection between her and Ajara from the start. You might remember fighting a Kraken during the Siege of Rallus dungeon. Why would a Kraken fight for Ashvane to begin with? Maybe something with a Pact and Ajara. Similar as to how on the Horde side, there was also a hinted connection between Ajara and Prophet Zul. It never really played out in game though, which is what I fear happened here. Perhaps they had a storyline planned with Ashvane, which would lead into explaining why she had an allegiance with Ajara. They made some change to the story, and now we end up with this unexplained plot. Now that's just one way though, for all I know, in the next patch we'll get an explanation from Sylvanas herself. That's uncertain. You should have killed me when you had the chance! The beauty that is Ashvane lumbers around with a massive shell which covers her back. It also absorbs quite a lot of damage, but if you hit it enough, it will eventually drop off. That's the moment where you can really bring the pain. And I love the Azerite that she's got going on, it's like her hairdo now, it looks amazing. The Catapus, it will regrow, stronger than before. Let's make sure to kill her before we run out of steam. Now don't be like me and just stand in the middle of the room, falling to a quick demise. As with Ashvane's defeat, the floor it opens up, inviting us further into the palace. Ah, good. You arrived just in time to welcome these little ones into my service. We cannot allow these creatures to hatch. They will overrun the surface. Welcome to Ajara's personal hatchery, where Orgoza keeps an eye on things, preparing for the day that her incubating horrors are unleashed upon the world. Its tentacles, they come with quite a sting, poison that tries to reach your tank's heart, killing them instantly. By sharing the pain between them, they will survive, while the rest of the team, they need to avoid death from above and death from Orgoza. He likes to spluge us with incubation fluids, something that you don't want to share with the others. We push him down, quite literally so, as Orgoza, he retreats to the lower chamber. Now don't try to be clever and jump off the stairway. You'll only find a quicker death. Down below, downstairs, Orgoza, he's busy casting a massive incubator spell, which does give us a bit of time to hurt it until the spell's interrupted. Take care of the ads that spawn. Take care of Orgoza. Onwards to the Queen's Court. I should be cross over your brutal attacks upon my underlings, but I must admit, you provide splendid entertainment. Perhaps he was right after all. You do show great potential. Enough games, Azara! This shall be the final day of your twisted reign! This is the Queen's court, and our Queen will not tolerate any impudence. Behavior quickly shut down, a taste of the Queen's true power, showing us that she's still just toying with us, guiding us ever further into her trap. For as long as we prove ourselves worthy, as long as we entertain her, she'll allow us to live. A good lesson to keep in mind as we take on the Queen's Court, Peshmar the Fanatical, and Silivas the Zealous. For 10,000 years, the Queen's Court has never failed to enforce the word of Ajara. 
Now, the queen's most powerful servants, they stand ready to fulfill her final decree. As of dealing with the two bosses that want us to run away or either get real close isn't hard enough. Azora is also keeping an eye on the fight and sometimes she just gets bored. To spice things up, she'll give out orders. Orders from the queen herself that none can disobey. She'll tell us where she wants us to stand, when we need to stack, when we need to split up, dancing to her command and do what she says. You show such heart. Preparations are nearly complete. I await your arrival below. The further down we go, the darker our enemies become. More and more void creatures stand in our way, until we reach the precipice of dreams. There is a presence here. Tendrils strangling my mind. The locks weaken. The world screams. Nazoth rises once more. Out there, titan pillars and chains descending into darkness. Jara wants us to see this. Why? Surely she knows we would never let that monster free. There is no time to warn the others. We must end this, champions! Now! Now for me personally, these last two fights of the raids, they have to be my favorites. Starting off with Zakul, Harbinger of Nyalofa. Nyalofa is a realm shrouded by mystery, mentioned by the Void-related items like the Puzzle Box of Yaxaron, but also beings like Ilkanov and Yasharaj. We don't know exactly what this Nyalofa is. Perhaps it's displayed during this fight. Perhaps it's the realm where Nazoth is hanging out. Perhaps it's an area in the Void Realm or something else entirely. We're not exactly certain. The end approaches! The harbinger for the end of days, Zakul stretched the last vestiges of sanity from a world in chaos, laying the foundation for Azeroth's new master. This fight takes place in different realms. There's our realm, the fear realm, and the delirium realm, which is my personal favorite, as that one provides a beautiful haste buff, and dying in it, it just sends you back to the previous realm. That means we need to take care of the boss and the abilities that he throws us in different realms at the same time, Thankfully, we do not stand alone in this fight. Felistra and Chandris, they're with us in this battle. Champions, I will hold open the portal to reality for as long as I can. One interesting thing to note, and this is something that we'll discover throughout the week. In the Dungeon Journal, it reads that on Mythic, Felistra pulls everyone back to reality to prevent them from succumbing to Zakul's madness, and then she herself falls victim to the whispers of the old gods. It does seem like this is just a temporary kind of loss, perhaps something to add a bit of spice to the fight, as Felistra, she does not succumb to the whispers of the void, she does not stay evil, as she still shows up in the Ashara fight. But who knows though, we haven't seen Mythic quite yet. I can't wait to see if there are any extra phases, what kind of juicy stuff might happen. Your psyche, Lazar, will rise. Nicely done. It is so rare for mortals to exceed my expectations. If only your friends had been as capable. That human novice, and the pale elf with the sword. Ah well. Acceptable losses. Liar! Now, is that any way to repay me for my generosity? For the privilege I have seen fit to grant you? Come, heroes. Prove yourselves worthy. Find me in the Circle of Stars. At last, the final preparations are in place, and we have a captive audience. Stay vigilant, champions. Azara conceals schemes within schemes. She wants something. You must indulge the theatrical nature of tonight's entertainment. We have waited so very long for this moment, and we simply cannot resist savoring it. Without further ado, the stage is set, the hour is at hand. Legions arise! So 
serve your queen's command. Remember how earlier you could spit on the queen and instantly die. Well, now you also have the choice to pledge your loyalty to her and become hostile to everyone around you. Disgust her and she'll make you vomit. There are some lovely interactions to be found here within the last prison, the final stage of Ashara's grand schemes. I call the cursed lovers to enter the stage. Their eyes long for one another, yet their gaze incurs calamity. To keep it all theatrical, she has us fight the cursed lovers that either need to see each other, can't be without one another, or they have the exact opposite going on and just can't stand to look at one another. The real cool part of the fight, that would be the stage that we're fighting on itself. It's of titan design and it has wards of power. If one of them is completely drained, the raid then takes ticking damage. If all of them run out, Azara simply wins. The ancient wards will be disabled and override the titan device keeping us off imprisoned. While she floats around the field, Azara keeps things interesting with handing out commands. Until we dealt with the cursed lovers and she's ready to unleash her own powers. I draw this ward with devoted blood. Given willingly from a champion's frozen heart. That means that the ward in the middle now also activates. This one does not power the facility, it actually empowers the queen if you let it. Say that energy is put into it, you can drain it by standing on the ward, similar to how you can keep the other wards energized, but do be careful, this does take away your maximum health. It gains energy from the queen being close to it, or her loyal followers reaching the middle, ready to lay down their lives for the glory of Azara. From darkness, sirens come forth! Coax the power from these ancient wards. Rattle the chains that bind him. Nizoth, let your wrath fall upon them. You see the truth now, don't you, heroes? Every move you've made has been according to my will. That lumbering dwarf believed you could save Azeroth by empowering your shiny little heart. The gift of a sleeping titan. Yes, a titan's heart was exactly what was needed. Not to heal the world, but to shatter the prison of a god. Such delicious irony. The Diamond King has been made a pawn. The ritual nears completion. The Black Empire rises, and the world awaits its true queen. There will be no coronation this day. Thalysra, aid me! Together we can hold her here! Now you will know what it means to be trapped, Azara! I am Azara! I was destined to rule! No force can bind me! Another whisper of Ilkana, claim victory. which is repeated here. You might have already caught the one about drowning ourselves in the circle of stars. The King of Diamonds be made a pawn. The necklace that we've been filling up, it's now turned against us in an attempt to shatter Nazar's prison. That is why the Queen has just been toying with us, moving the pieces just right to accomplish their plan. You caught me off guard. Fair enough. But you are as trapped here as I. This need not be the end for any of us. I know your dreams, your lust for power, the hunger with which you pursue your desires. Kneel before me, and I will bestow talents beyond your wildest imagination. Refuse, and be crushed beneath the tides. Choose your fate. The wards are running empty, and Azov's piercing gaze crosses the battlefield. The console surges with power, power that really, really hurts, but can also be used to our advantage. Her alluring aura still beckons heroes towards her, even inspiring jealousy amongst them, pushing themselves to be the first to answer their queen's call. An ability she already commanded even way back when, not even the demons that were summoned through the Well of Eternity were immune to her charms. The queen, whose power was set by Manoroth to be close to kill Jaden and Archimond. The queen, who refused to become a slave as she allied with Nazoth. She has thrown everything at us, but the Horde and the Alliance, they're working together, and as they've proven so many times before, they're able to end their life. You are all beneath me. She wanted us divided, 
Fighting each other kept us distracted from the true threat. Ajara wasn't the only one manipulating us. I should have seen it sooner. Do not relax your guard. Something here is... stirring. We talked about the cinematic in more detail during my reaction video, but as we can see, Nazov isn't quite done with the queen yet, and drags her down below. Some find the sound effect very similar to a dagger stabbing her, which I'm not saying is impossible. They might want us to hear Nazov using the blade of the Black Empire, but at the same time, we also haven't heard a thing about it. Ever since Nafanos and the Blade, during our Nashatar adventures, they simply disappeared, so it would be a little bit out of the blue. But who knows? Another line from Eogenov mentions that At the hour of her third death, she ushers in our coming. It's still unclear who's deaf and who are these beings that that death would usher in their coming, what they're talking about. It's still unclear. Some speculate that it's Sylvanas, some say Illyria, some think perhaps it's Azeroth itself. And now, since Azara died once and then entered the bargain, the second time right here on the battlefield, perhaps her death in the future will usher in their coming. Be it Nazoff and his armies, the old gods taking over the world, the Void Lords in general, something else entirely. Again, who knows. For some, this was not the massive event that we were hoping for, to close off the palace. But we do get some teasing for the future, as well as Azara is still out there, there's still more story to come. And let's not forget that Nazoff's prison has been shattered. For the first time since the days of the Black Empire, an old god is on the loose. Next time we face him, it won't be like the other old gods that we faced. They were still trapped, showing just a tiny bit of the power reaching the surface. Yuxeron, for example, he's said to be his biggest Norfriend. When the day comes, when we'll have to face Nazoth, it's going to be one hell of a battle. Will that battle take place in the next patch? Hard to say. There is the rumor going on that the ending of 8.2, it should make it clear who the end boss for Battle for Azeroth is going to be. From this moment, you would say Nazoth. But as some of you pointed out during the reaction video, there's also this conversation. Control your power. Our victory rings hollow. You. Azara's master will rise. Nothing can stop that now. For all her lies, Priscilla Ashvane spoke one truth. The war between the Alliance and Horde has kept us distracted. Divided, we have no hope against Nazoth. We may have found common cause here in Nazjatar, but the battle still rages beyond these waters. So long as Sylvanas holds Orgrimmar, there can be no lasting peace. The war needs to end, Lorthamar. You know this to be true. I had hoped that reason would prevail, but the time has come to finish this. I will tell my people what transpired here, of how Azjara fell because we stood together, of the threat rising from the depths, and all that is at stake if we should fail. Then I will take my place beside Sarfang and Thrall, and pray that the Sindori stand with me. This would mean that the focus of the story, the emboss for Battle for Azeroth, it would be related to the rebellion being built up against Sylvanas. We have a storyline way of the Spirit of Holton that's trying to figure out who wanted him to make Sylvanas the Warchief to begin with, and who's been messing with his own spirits. A storyline closely connected to the afterlife, 
Apparently, when somebody has some boss behind him now, the bench queen herself has three Valkyrie left that are part of the original bargain. They are the ones, as far as we know, that have the power to bring her back from hell. She also has the ever loyal Nefanos doing something with the Blade of the Black Empire. The real mission that he was supposed to fulfill here in Nashatar. Who knows where that's going to take us? Who knows how the rebellion is going to play out? What Azra's fate is going to be? Will the Titan spirit inside wake up? What's the point of Battle for Azeroth? Who knows, but I personally can't wait to find it all out. The Boy King serves at the Master's table. Three lives will he offer you. For now though, I think we've been going on for long enough. So as always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time... See ya!